How long have you been subscribed to the channel? Let me know down below. But if it's been over a year, maybe two, you'll remember that a while ago, I made a lot of videos about the PlayStation Vita. But now in 2017, I haven't touched this thing in such a long time. And I mean, literally on my channel, I haven't made a video about it, but also, <coughs> It's really bad. It's gotten really bad. In fact, since the Switch came out, I've had almost no urge to pick up and play this thing. But does that mean that the Vita isn't worth buying now? If you don't have one yet, should you go out and pick one of these up? Does it have games in its library that are still worth picking up and playing? Well, I'm really excited to do this video because it has been so long since I talked about one of my babies, one of my children that is unfortunately being neglected. His 10 Vita games that no matter what, are always going to be worth a playthrough. Let's get started. He says Vita and not Vita or VTs or Vita or whatever the frick I pronounce it. Shut up. I pronounce words how I pronounce words. And if I can get away with Sega Master System, I can get away with saying Vita. Persona 4 Golden. I can't even begin to explain why you need to play this game if you haven't already. We're all very aware of the Persona series, at least I'd like to think so, with Persona 5 being released on PlayStation 4 now, and there was kind of a big deal around it, and even though I feel like not enough people are playing that either, I really hope that Persona is out there in the world now at this point, but if it's not, this game got me into RPGs, and this on the Vita, the remastered version as such, with added characters, added story, added gameplay, added endings. It's the definitive way to play it for sure. And I, I've talked about this game a few times before in my videos, but to sum it up the same way that I always do, it really is like playing a Sims type game where you're living around these characters, you're eating, you're going on dates, you're going on adventures, you're doing daily activities, you're going to school, you're learning, you're reading, you're studying. It's on a day schedule over a year, so you play each and every day in a year, and it really makes you feel like you are living a life of this teenage kid in Japan, you're there and you've experienced this whole nother life that you get drawn into and you become attached to all the characters. But come nightfall, or come whenever you, you really want, you dive into this other world inside a TV where you become this badass group of kids just destroying demons in this other world, trying to figure out who is committing all these mysterious murders in the real world and how these two worlds are connecting and what and what the heck is going on. And depending on how you play the game will depend on how much you actually find out about what went on over this entire 75 hours for me of gameplay. So let's dive into one that I consider to be a hidden gem and that's Unit 13. I believe this was the first attempt at making a shooter game like a third person shooter game or first person or any kind of shooter game on the Vita. I could be wrong there, but even if it wasn't, it was definitely the first time it was done right. Overlooked because you, know, you look at it and it's easy to gloss over it. So it makes it underrated, but it's actually a lot of fun. Honestly, considering this game was an early title on the Vita, I think it still looks pretty great. The gameplay really varies from mission to mission. There'll be missions where it's like all stealth. There's missions where you kind of just got to Rambo in there and destroy everything. And then there's a mix of both where you kind of got to stealth and then Rambo or then just kind of find the middle ground. It's a cheap game. There's a lot of content in it. You'll have a fun playthrough. In my opinion, you might be one and done with this game once you finish it, but there is a scoring system so you can go back and try and get the best score possible. There are a few first person, third person shooter games on the Vita that actually work surprisingly well and this is one of them. Next up, we have a game called Tearaway. This game might be one of the most unique games on the Vita. It's definitely the game that really plays to the Vita's strength. More than any other game, when it comes to the, ca the camera on the Vita, the touchpad, the back touchpad, this game uses all of those elements perfectly. No other game ever compared to how great this game used all of the gimmicks that the PlayStation Vita has and made them feel not like gimmicks. Through its amazing storytelling and fun gameplay, it'll show you things that you might not have experienced before in other games. The game is kind of like an interactive storybook that you become a character in. Again, as I said, with the front camera, you literally become a character in this game. It's such a creative game, and as I said, it never really feels gimmicky or becomes gimmicky. It's an inspired game. It's beautiful, it's adorable, and it's short. It never gets boring, and you'll probably play it again. It's worth it, for sure. Next, we have Uncharted Golden Abyss. The reason why I put it on this list and why I've talked about it before, I'm choosing to talk about it again. I'm a huge fan of the Uncharted series, and I feel like this one still always gets overlooked, but it's so cheap now and it's really worth playing. If you're a fan of the series, it's just an extra addition. It's, it's pretty much like playing the first game, but on the Vita. The story is weak in my opinion. The characters 
are a little bit more weak in my opinion. I mean, Drake's always great, but his supporting cast in this game isn't the best. It's definitely nowhere near the storytelling of the other games. But as far as the gameplay goes, it's on point and exactly the same as the first game. And it's really fun to feel like you're taking one of the early Uncharted games but on the road. As far as adventure games on the Vita goes, this is still one of the best ones. If you can get past the incredibly long loading times, Wipeout 2048 is one of the funnest racing games I've played, especially funnest portable racing games I've played. Not counting Mario Kart, because nothing beats Mario Kart. It has a really challenging campaign mode with a lot of variety in its events and really well-designed maps and tracks to race on. It's satisfying and rewarding to play through this game and it'll give you the need for speed. It is so fun to barrel down these tracks as fast as you possibly can taking out your enemies along the way also it's pretty cool that in like 20 30 years from now we're gonna be racing on tracks like this in real life only 30 years to go and we'll get our hovering cars finally here's another great shooter for the Vita and we're going in the first person this time Killzone this game is the game that will catch you off guard it caught me off guard it is surprisingly fun as someone who isn't a fan of the Killzone series I never really got into any of them. This one was a lot of fun to play, and sure, I was looking for games to play on the Vita, so I desperately turned to Killzone, but it surprised me, it really did. It has a short campaign, but it's a really fun campaign, and it's by far the best shooter on the Vita, hands down. It still looks fantastic. I'm still surprised that they managed to make this game look so great on the Vita. There are some frame rate issues, but in my opinion, they're not that bad, but it's a decent trade-off for having a game like this that showcases what the Vita can do, albeit with a couple of frame rate issues. Let's mix things up a bit. Next we have Luminous. Luminous? Luminous? I never know. Go away. It's too hot to wind the window up. Jesus Christ. You sound like a human in a dog suit. <sighs> I forgot the camera was rolling. I hate that dog. This is a very visually appealing game and it is addictive. There are actually RPG mechanics in this game and a ton of unlockables which adds to its addictivity. Addi addictive. Wow. You can either go for high scores, chill out to some good music. You can sit down for a couple hours, relax, chill out, glass of wine, bubble bath, luminous. It's a good, it's a good, it's a fun good. Let's take it away from fun, relaxing, having a wine in the bath gameplay with some chilled out music and talk about Soul Sacrifice, a demonic action adventure game that's all about skulls, blood, and demons, kind of. This is another big adventure game like Uncharted or Uncharted. I know I said Uncharted twice there, but that's also what I wrote in my notes. I think I meant Assassin's Creed. It's a dark and gruesome game with a fantastic and deep story. While most of that story is told by reading, like in a book setting, if you enjoy reading, it's actually a very rewarding story to get invested in. The combat itself is extremely diverse and it never really feels like it gets old. However, there is a lack of enemy and location diversity. You will keep going back to the same places, maybe with a couple of palette swaps, and the enemies will always be kind of this, it never really feels like there's much variation there. But the gameplay, as I said, is so diverse. It never feels like that it gets old. It always feels like the game is moving along and it always feels like you're kicking more and more ass every hour that you play. It also uses the Vita uh, functionality really well when it comes to all its gimmicks. It does that, it's another one that does that good. It's really hard. I have a fan blowing on me right here, which I hope you guys can't see. I'm struggling this in this video, guys. Now, if you watched my PlayStation 4 games worth buying recently, you'll see that I talked about Gravity Rush and its sequel, so I won't go into too much information here. If you want to find out more about this incredibly fun game, I recommend watching my PlayStation 4 video, which I'll leave a link to at the end of this video. See that? I'm plugging myself. And while that is ported over to the PlayStation 4, as I said, I think that's getting really expensive now. So this is the, actually the cheaper way to play it too. Fun game and I highly recommend it. Oh, and as I sweat, the final game on this list is Final Fantasy X and X2 Remastered. This one is almost a no-brainer, even if it was just a better looking version of these games that you could play on the go on your Vita, that in itself would be worth it. Plus the fact that it's, I think, under 20 bucks now for so many hours of gameplay, but it's not just that. We also have extra story content and they re-recorded 
the musical score. So there's actually reasons to pick up and play this again. If you played it way back on the PlayStation, you remember that game being amazing and you haven't played it since, this is the way to do it. There's also a PlayStation, I actually have it for PlayStation 4 as well, which is sure, probably better for an actual gaming experience to sit down at home with your big TV. But when it comes to the Vita, you can download most of the Final Fantasies on the online shop. You can get Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and 9. You can you can buy Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2 Remastered. You can really pimp out your Vita as a old not not one stop shop for Final Fantasy, which I think is really cool, and I need to get on downloading some of the other games. There are so many other games that even just I have that I could have put on the list. The Jack Collection, Little Big Planet, Wipeout, Disgaea 3 or 4, Silent Hill. Honestly, Batman Blackgate is a pretty fun game. There are so many games that we could sit here and talk about. Maybe I'll do another video, but I would love to hear what PlayStation Vita games you recommend picking up and playing. What PlayStation Vita games are worth it? Or please introduce me to some new hidden gems because it's been a while since I bought some PlayStation Vita games, since I added to my Vita collection, I would love to do that. Let me know that down below. Let me know if you like this video. Hit like on this video. Subscribe. I'm, I, I always like to try and make my videos as entertaining as possible, and I feel really average about the way this one went. And it's mostly because I, it's just so hot. <laughs> And I really want to have this fan on and it's just so loud and I don't have air conditioning and when I try and open the window that f***ing dog barks and I'm just not feeling this one so I hope it turned out okay and I'm sorry if it was kind of boring. Far out. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>